What is cogeneration? Cogeneration is an energy production process involving the simultaneous generation of thermal steam or hot water, and electric energy by using a single primary heat source. By producing two kinds of useful fuels in the same facility the net energy yield from the primary fuel increases from 30 to 35 percent to 80 to 90 percent. Cogeneration can result in significant cost savings and can reduce any possible environmental effects conventional energy production may produce. Cogeneration facilities have been installed at a variety of sites, including oil refineries, chemical plants, paper mills, utility complexes, and mining operations. What is the cleanest fossil fuel? Natural gas, composed primarily of methane, is the cleanest of all fossil fuels. Producing only carbon dioxide and water vapor when it is burned. Coal and oil produce higher levels of harmful emissions including nitrogen oxides and sulfur dioxide when burned. Coal creates the most carbon dioxide when it is burned. Natural gas emits 25 to 50 percent less carbon dioxide than either oil or coal for each unit of energy produced. How much of the world's energy use is fueled by coal? Coal provides over 23% of global primary energy needs and generates around 39% of the world's electricity. In the United States, Coal supplies more than half of the electricity consumed. Nearly 70% of total global steel production is dependent on coal. Why is sulfuric acid important? Sometimes called oil of vitriol, or vitriolic acid, sulfuric acid. H2SO4, has become one of the most important of all chemicals. It was little used until it became essential for the manufacture of soda in the 18th century. It is prepared industrially by the reaction of water with sulfur trioxide which in turn is made by chemical combination of sulfur dioxide and oxygen by one of two processes. The contact process or the chamber process. Many manufactured articles in common use depend in some way on sulfuric acid for their production. 90% of the sulfuric acid manufactured in the United States is used in the production of fertilizers and other inorganic chemicals. How is underground coal mined? There are two basic types of underground mining methods, room and pillar and long wall. In room and pillar mines, 
coal is removed by cutting rooms, or large tunnels. In the solid coal, leaving pillars of coal for roof support. Long wall mining takes successive slices over the entire length of a long working face. In the United States, about two-thirds of the coal recovered by underground mining is by room and pillar method. The other third is recovered by long wall mining. Coal seams in the United States range in thickness from a thin film to 50 feet, 15 meters, or more. The thickest coal beds are in the western states, ranging from 10 feet. 3 meters, in Utah and New Mexico to 50 feet, 15 meters, in Wyoming. Other places, such as Great Britain, use the long wall method. How much oil is estimated to be in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge? Geologists are uncertain as to the exact amount of oil that is in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Based on the one seismic survey that was done and the exploration of a few test wells drilled, it is estimated that there may be 16 billion barrels of oil under the tundra of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. However, how economical it is to recover the oil is dependent on market prices and shipping costs. When oil was $25 per barrel, the United States Geological Survey estimated only 7 billion barrels might be pumped profitably. When the price per barrel soared to over $100 per barrel, it would be profitable to recover many more billions of barrels of oil. Drilling for oil in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge continues to pose many environmental issues and concerns. Why are coal, oil, and natural gas called fossil fuels? Coal, oil, and natural gas are composed of the remains of organisms that lived as long ago as 500 million years. These microscopic organisms, such as phytoplankton, became incorporated into the bottom sediments and then were converted, with time, to oil and gas. Coal is the remains of plants and trees, changing into peat and then lignite, that were buried and subjected to pressure, temperature, and chemical processes for millions of years. Fossil fuels are non-renewable sources of energy. There is a finite supply of the resources for fossil fuels. Eventually these resources will diminish to the point of being too expensive or too environmentally damaging to retrieve. Fossil fuels provide more than 85% of all the energy consumed in the United States. Including two-thirds of the electricity and nearly all of the transportation fuels. What types of coal are there? The first stage in the formation of coal converts peat into lignite, a dark brown type of coal. Lignite is then converted into subituminous coal as pressure from overlying materials increases. 
under still greater pressure, a harder coal called bituminous, or soft, coal is produced. Intense pressure changes bituminous coal into anthracite, the hardest of all coals. How and when was coal formed? Coal is formed from the remains of plants that have undergone a series of far-reaching changes. Turning into a substance called peat, which subsequently was buried. Through millions of years, Earth's crust buckled and folded. Subjecting the peat deposits to very high pressure and changing the deposits into coal. The Carboniferous, or coal bearing, period occurred about 250 million years ago. Geologists in the United States sometimes divide this period into the Mississippian and the Pennsylvanian periods. Most of the high-grade coal deposits are to be found in the strata of the Pennsylvanian period. How is silt made? Silk fiber is a continuous protein filament produced by a silkworm to form its cocoon. The principal species used in commercial silk making is the mulberry silkworm. The larva of the silk moth Bombyx mori, belonging to the order Lepidoptera. The raw silk fiber has three elements two filaments excreted from both of the silkworms glands and a soluble silk gum called saracen, which cements the filaments together. It is from these filaments that the caterpillar constructs a cocoon around itself. The process of silk making starts with raising silkworms on diets. Of mulberry leaves for five weeks until they spin their cocoons. Then the cocoons are treated with heat to kill the silkworms inside. Otherwise when the moths emerged, they would break the long silk filaments. After the cocoons are soaked in hot water, the filaments of 5 to 10 cocoons are unwound in the reeling process. And twisted into a single thicker filament, still too fine for weaving. These twisted filaments are twisted again into a thread that can be woven. Who developed the process for making ammonia? Known since ancient times, ammonia, NH3, has been commercially important for more than 100 years. The first breakthrough in the large-scale synthesis of ammonia resulted from the work of Fritz Haber, 1863-1934. How is gasohol made? Gasohol, a mixture of 90% unleaded gasoline and 10% ethyl alcohol. Ethanol, has gained some acceptance as a fuel for motor vehicles. It is comparable in performance to 100% unleaded gasoline with the added benefit of superior anti-knock properties, no premature fuel ignition.
no engine modifications are needed for the use of Gasahal and all auto manufacturers approve the use of Gasahal. Blends of 10% Ethanol In gasoline vehicles Since corn is the most abundant U.S. grain crop, it is predominantly used in producing ethanol. However, the fuel can be made from other organic raw materials. Such as oats, barley, wheat, milo, sugar beets, or sugar cane. Potatoes, cassava, a starchy plant, and cellulose. If broken up into fermentable sugars, are possible other sources. The corn starch is processed through grinding and cooking. The process requires the conversion of a starch into a sugar, which in turn is converted into alcohol by reaction with yeast. The alcohol is distilled, and any water is removed until it is 200 proof, 100% alcohol. One acre of corn yields 250 gallons, 946 liters, of ethanol, an acre of sugar beets yields 350 gallons. 1,325 liters, while an acre of sugar can produce 630 gallons, 2,385 liters. In the future, motor fuel could conceivably be produced almost exclusively from garbage. But currently its conversion remains an expensive process. How much of the U.S. energy supply is from renewable sources? Renewable energy resources accounted for only 8% of total energy consumption. In the United States in 2009, hydropower is the single largest source of renewable energy in the United States. Accounting for 35% of total renewable energy. Where does Isinglass come from? Isinglass is the purest form of animal gelatin. It is manufactured from the swimming bladder of sturgeon and other fishes. It is used in the clarification of wine and beer as well as in the making of some cements jams, jellies, and soups. What is Kashmir? Kashmir goats, which live high in the plateaus of the area from northern China to Mongolia are covered in a coarse outer hair that helps protect them from the cold, harsh weather. As insulation, these goats have a softer, finer layer of hair or down under the coarse outer hair. This fine hair is shed annually and processed to make cashmere. Each goat produces enough cashmere to make one sweater every four years. Which countries have the highest reserves of natural gas? Worldwide reserves of natural gas are estimated at 6,254 trillion cubic feet with 41% of 
the total located in the Middle East and 32% of the total located in Europe and the former U. SSR How do the costs of various fuels compare? Fuel prices are reported in the units in which they are typically sold, for example, dollars per gallon. However, since the energy content per gallon of each fuel is different, the price paid per unit of energy is often different from the price paid per gallon. The following chart shows the average price per gallon, the average price in gasoline gallon equivalents and the average price in dollars per million BTU as of 2009. Interest in alternative fuels increases when the actual price differential for gallon increases even if the savings is not as great on an energy equivalent basis. Why is styrofoam a good insulator? Styrofoam insulates well because the foam form increases. The length of path for heat flow through the material. It also reduces the effective cross-sectional area across which the heat can flow. How does ethanol differ from gasohol? Ethanol, E85, is a mixture of 85% ethyl alcohol and 15% gasoline. It can only be used in flexible fuel vehicles, FFVs. Flexible fuel vehicles are designed to run on gasoline, ethanol, E85, or any mixture of the two. What is amber grease? Amber grease a highly odorous, waxy substance found floating in tropical seas. Is a secretion from the sperm whale, Visitor Catadon. The whale secretes amber grease to protect its stomach from the sharp bone of the cuttlefish. A squid-like sea mollusk, which it ingests. Amber grease is used in perfumery as a fixative to extend the life of a perfume and as a flavoring for food and beverages. Today amber grease is synthesized and used by the perfume trade, which has voluntarily refused to purchase natural amber grease to protect sperm whales from exploitation. What are synthetic fuels? Synthetic fuels, commonly called synfuels, are gaseous and liquid fuels produced synthetically from coal and oil shale. Basically, coal is converted to gaseous or liquid forms in coal-based synfuels. These are easier to transport and burn more cleanly than coal itself. Synthetic natural gas is also produced from coal. Disadvantages of these processes are that they require a large amount of 
water and the new fuels have 30 to 40 percent less fuel content than pure coal. Synfuels from oil shale are produced by extracting the oils from the rocky base. Gasoline and kerosene can be produced from oil shale. Synfuel may also be obtained from biomass from human and animal waste. The waste is converted to methane by the action of anaerobic bacteria in a digester. What are composite materials? Composite materials, or simply composites, consist of two parts. The reinforcing phase and the binder or matrix. Composites may be natural substances, such as wood and bone, or man-made substances. A composite product is different from each of its components and is often superior to each individual component. The binder or matrix of a composite is the material that supports the reinforcing phase. The reinforcing phase is usually in the form of particles, fibers, or flat sheets. Reinforced concrete is an example of a composite material. The steel rods embedded in the concrete, the matrix, are the reinforcing phase adding strength and flexibility to the concrete. High performance composites are composites that perform better than traditional structural materials, such as steel. Most high performance composites have fibers in the reinforcing phase and a polymer matrix. The fibers may be glass, boron, silicon carbide, aluminum oxide, or a type of polymer. The fibers are often interwoven to form bundles. The purpose of the matrix, usually a polymer, in a high performance composite is to hold the fibers together and protect them. What are the advantages of solar power? Solar energy is a clean, abundant, and safe energy source. More energy falls from the sun on Earth in one hour than is used by everyone in the world in one year. Over a two-week period, Earth gets as much energy from the sun as is stored in all known reserves of coal, oil, and natural gas. Solar energy can be used to heat water and spaces for homes and businesses or can be converted into electricity. Solar energy accounts for only about 1% of the total renewable energy resources. What are the advantages of solar power? Solar energy is a clean, abundant, and safe energy source. More energy falls from the sun on Earth in one hour than is used by everyone in the world in one year. Over a two-week period, Earth gets as much energy from the sun as is stored in all known reserves of coal, oil, and natural gas. Solar energy can be used to heat water and spaces for homes and businesses or can be converted into electricity.
solar energy accounts for only about 1% of the total renewable energy resources. What is the difference between passive solar energy systems and active solar energy systems? Passive solar energy systems use the architectural design, the natural materials, or absorptive structures of the building as an energy saving system. The building itself serves as a solar collector and storage device. An example would be thick walled stone and adobe dwellings that slowly collect heat during the day and gradually release it at night. Passive systems require little or no investment of external equipment. Active solar energy systems require a separate collector a storage device and controls linked to pumps or fans that draw heat from storage when it is available. Active solar systems generally pump a heat absorbing fluid medium, air, water or an antifreeze solution through a collector. Collectors such as insulated water tanks vary in size. Depending on the number of sunless days in a locale. Another heat storage system uses eutectic, phase changing chemicals to store a large amount of energy in a small volume. What is the difference between passive solar energy systems and active solar energy systems? Passive solar energy systems use the architectural design, the natural materials, or absorptive structures of the building as an energy saving system. The building itself serves as a solar collector and storage device. An example would be thick walled stone and adobe dwellings that slowly collect heat during the day and gradually release it at night. Passive systems require little or no investment of external equipment. Active solar energy systems require a separate collector a storage device and controls linked to pumps or fans that draw heat from storage when it is available. Active solar systems generally pump a heat absorbing fluid medium, air, water or an antifreeze solution through a collector. Collectors such as insulated water tanks vary in size. Depending on the number of sunless days in a locale. Another heat storage system uses eutectic, phase changing chemicals to store a large amount of energy in a small volume. How is solar energy converted into electricity? Solar energy is converted into electricity using photovoltaic PV cells or concentrating solar power plants. Photovoltaic cells convert sunlight directly into electricity. Individual PV cells are combined in modules of about 40 cells to form a solar panel. 10 to 20 solar panels are used to power a typical home. 
The panels are usually mounted on the home facing south or mounted onto a tracking device that follows the sun for the maximum exposure to sunlight. Power plants and other industrial locations combine more solar panels to generate electricity. Concentrating solar power plants collect the heat, energy, from the sun to heat a fluid. Which produces steam that drives a generator to produce electricity. The three main types of concentrating solar power systems are parabolic trough, solar dish, and solar power tower, which describe the different types of collectors. Parabolic troughs collectors have a long, rectangular, U-shaped reflector or mirror focused on the sun with a tube, receiver, along its length. A solar dish looks very much like a large satellite dish that concentrates the sunlight into a thermal receiver that absorbs and collects the heat and transfers it to the engine generator. The engine produces mechanical power which is used to run a generator converting mechanical power into electrical power. A solar tower uses a field of flat, sun-tracking mirrors, called heliostats, to collect and concentrate the sunlight onto a tower-mounted heat exchanger, receiver. A fluid is heated in the receiver to generate steam, which is used in a generator to produce electricity. How is solar energy converted into electricity? Solar energy is converted into electricity using photovoltaic PV cells or concentrating solar power plants. Photovoltaic cells convert sunlight directly into electricity. Individual PV cells are combined in modules of about 40 cells to form a solar panel. 10 to 20 solar panels are used to power a typical home. The panels are usually mounted on the home facing south or mounted onto a tracking device that follows the sun for the maximum exposure to sunlight. Power plants and other industrial locations combine more solar panels to generate electricity. Concentrating solar power plants collect the heat, energy, from the sun to heat a fluid. Which produces steam that drives a generator to produce electricity. The three main types of concentrating solar power systems are parabolic trough, solar dish, and solar power tower, which describe the different types of collectors. Parabolic troughs collectors have a long, rectangular, U-shaped reflector or mirror focused on the sun with a tube, receiver, along its length. A solar dish looks very much like a large satellite dish that concentrates the sunlight into a thermal receiver that absorbs and collects the heat and transfers it to the engine generator. The engine produces mechanical power, which is used to run a generator converting mechanical power into electrical power. A solar tower uses a field of flat, sun-tracking mirrors, called heliostats. To collect and concentrate the sunlight onto a tower-mounted heat exchanger, receiver. A fluid is heated in the receiver to generate steam, which is used in a generator to produce electricity.
How does a solar cell generate electricity? A solar cell, also called a photovoltaic PV cell, consists of several layers of silicon-based material. When photons, particles of solar energy from sunlight strike a photovoltaic cell, they are reflected, pass through, or are absorbed. Absorbed photons provide energy to generate electricity. The top P layer absorbs light energy. This energy frees electrons at the junction layer between the P layer and the N layer. The freed electrons collect at the bottom N layer. The loss of electrons from the top layer produces holes. In the layer that are then filled by other electrons. When a connection, or circuit, is completed between the P layer and N layer the flow of electrons creates an electric current. The photovoltaic effect, including the naming of the P layer and N layer, was discovered by Russell Ohl, 1898-1987, a researcher at Bell Labs, in 1940. How does a solar cell generate electricity? A solar cell, also called a photovoltaic PV, cell, consists of several layers of silicon-based material. When photons, particles of solar energy from sunlight, strike a photovoltaic cell, they are reflected, pass through, or are absorbed. Absorbed photons provide energy to generate electricity. The top P layer absorbs light energy. This energy frees electrons at the junction layer between the P layer and the N layer. The freed electrons collect at the bottom N layer. The loss of electrons from the top layer produces holes in the layer that are then filled by other electrons. When a connection, or circuit, is completed between the P layer and N layer the flow of electrons creates an electric current. The photovoltaic effect, including the naming of the P layer and N layer, was discovered by Russell Ohl, 1898-1987, a researcher at Bell Labs, in 1940. Did the White House ever have solar panels? Yes, during President Jimmy Carter's, 1924, administration. 32 solar panels were installed on the roof of the White House above the Oval Office on June 30, 1979. The panels were subsequently removed in 1986 during President Ronald Reagan's, 1911-2004, administration. Did the White House ever have solar panels? Yes, during President Jimmy Carter's, 1924, administration. 
32 solar panels were installed on the roof of the White House above the Oval Office on June 30, 1979. The panels were subsequently removed in 1986 during President Ronald Reagan's 1911-2004 administration. When were photovoltaic cells developed? A group of researchers at Bell Labs, Calvin Fuller, 1902-1994, Daryl Chapin, 1906-1995, and Gerald Pearson, 1905-1987. Developed the first practical silicon solar cell in 1954. The earliest PV cells were used to power you. As space satellites. The use of PV cells was then expanded. To power small items such as calculators and watches. When were photovoltaic cells developed? A group of researchers at Bell Labs, Calvin Fuller, 1902-1994, Daryl Chapin, 1906-1995, and Gerald Pearson, 1905-1987. Developed the first practical silicon solar cell in 1954. The earliest PV cells were used to power you. As space satellites. The use of PV cells was then expanded. To power small items such as calculators and watches. Where is the largest solar generating plant located? The largest solar generating plant in the world is the Solar Energy Generating System. SEGS, located in California's Mojave Desert. Consisting of nine power plants. SEGS 8 and 9 located in Harper Lake are individually and collectively the largest solar generating power plants in the world. Where is the largest solar generating plant located? The largest solar generating plant in the world is the Solar Energy Generating System SEGS, located in California's Mojave Desert. Consisting of nine power plants, SEGS 8 and 9 located in Harper Lake are individually and collectively the largest solar generating power plants in the world. Who invented the fuel cell? The earliest fuel cell, known as a gas battery, was invented by Sir William Grove. 1811 to 1896, in 1839. Grove's fuel cell incorporated separate test tubes of hydrogen and oxygen which he placed over strips of platinum. It was later modified by Francis Thomas Bacon, 1904-1992, with nickel replacing the platinum. 
a fuel cell is equivalent to a generator it converts a fuel's chemical energy directly into electricity. Who invented the fuel cell? The earliest fuel cell, known as a gas battery, was invented by Sir William Grove. 1811 to 1896, in 1839. Grove's fuel cell incorporated separate test tubes of hydrogen and oxygen. Which he placed over strips of platinum. It was later modified by Francis Thomas Bacon, 1904 to 1992, with nickel replacing the platinum. A fuel cell is equivalent to a generator, it converts a fuel's chemical energy directly into electricity. What is biomass energy? The catch-all term biomass includes all the living organisms in an area. Wood, crops, and crop waste, and wastes of plant, mineral, and animal matter are part of the biomass. Much of it is in garbage, which can be burned for heat energy or allowed to decay and produce methane gas. However, some crops are grown specifically for energy, including sugar cane, sorghum, ocean kelp, water hyacinth, and various species of trees. It has been estimated that 90% of U.S. waste products could be burned to provide as much energy as 100 million tons of coal, 20% will not burn, but can be recycled. The use of biomass energy is significantly higher in developing countries where electricity and motor vehicles are scarcer. What is biomass energy? The catch-all term biomass includes all the living organisms in an area. Wood, crops, and crop waste, and wastes of plant, mineral, and animal matter are part of the biomass. Much of it is in garbage, which can be burned for heat energy or allowed to decay and produce methane gas. However, some crops are grown specifically for energy, including sugar cane, sorghum, ocean kelp, water hyacinth, and various species of trees. It has been estimated that 90% of U.S. waste products could be burned to provide as much energy as 100 million tons of coal, 20% will not burn, but can be recycled. The use of biomass energy is significantly higher in developing countries where electricity and motor vehicles are scarcer. Which plant has been investigated as a source of petroleum? A number of plant species have been investigated as potential sources of petroleum. The shrub called the gopher plant, Euphorbia lathyris, produces significant quantities of a milk-like sap called latex that is an emulsion of hydrocarbons in water. Another candidate is Potosporum resiniferum, a native of the Philippines. The fruit of this plant, 
called a petroleum nut, is quite large and the oil harvested from it is frequently used for illumination. Various experiments are in progress to use vegetable and seed oils as diesel substitutes. Particularly in farm machinery. In Western Europe, there are over 200 power plants that burn rubbish to produce electricity. France, Denmark and Switzerland recover 50, 60 and 80% of their municipal waste respectively. Biomass can be converted into biofuels such as biogas or methane, methanol and ethanol. However, the process has been more costly than the conventional fossil fuel processes. Rubbish buried in the ground can provide methane gas through anaerobic decomposition. One ton of refuse can produce 8,000 cubic feet, 227 cubic meters, of methane. Which plant has been investigated as a source of petroleum? A number of plant species have been investigated as potential sources of petroleum. The shrub called the gopher plant, Euphorbia lathyris. Produces significant quantities of a milk like sap called latex that is an emulsion of hydrocarbons in water. Another candidate is Potosporum resiniferum, a native of the Philippines. The fruit of this plant, called a petroleum nut, is quite large and the oil harvested from it is frequently used for illumination. Various experiments are in progress to use vegetable and seed oils as diesel substitutes. Particularly in farm machinery. In Western Europe, there are over 200 power plants that burn rubbish to produce electricity. France, Denmark and Switzerland recover 50, 60 and 80% of their municipal waste respectively. Biomass can be converted into biofuels such as biogas or methane, methanol and ethanol. However, the process has been more costly than the conventional fossil fuel processes. Rubbish buried in the ground can provide methane gas through anaerobic decomposition. One ton of refuse can produce 8,000 cubic feet. 227 cubic meters of methane. Which woods have the best heating quality in a wood burning stove? Wood accounts for 28% of the total of renewable energy resources in the United States. Woods that have high heat value, meaning that one cord equals 200 to 250 gallons. 757 to 946 liters of fuel oil or 250 to 300 cubic feet, 7 to 8.5 cubic meters of natural gas. Our hickory, beech, oak, yellow birch, ash, hornbeam, sugar maple, and apple. Woods that have medium heat value, meaning that one cord equals 150 to 200 gallons. 567 to 757 liters of fuel oil or 200 to 250 cubic feet, 5.5 to 7 cubic meters, of natural gas. Our white birch, Douglas fir, red maple, eastern larch, big leaf maple, and elm. 
woods that have a low heat value, meaning that one quart equals 100 to 150 gallons, 378 to 567 liters. Of fuel oil or 150 to 200 cubic feet, 4 to 5.5 cubic meters, of natural gas, are aspen, red alder, white pine. Redwood, western hemlock, eastern hemlock, sitka spruce, cottonwood, western red cedar, and lodgepole pine. Which woods have the best heating quality in a wood burning stove? Wood accounts for 28% of the total of renewable energy resources in the United States. Woods that have high heat value, meaning that one quart equals 200 to 250 gallons. 757 to 946 liters of fuel oil or 250 to 300 cubic feet, 7 to 8.5 cubic meters of natural gas. Are hickory, beech, oak, yellow birch, ash, hornbeam, sugar maple, and apple. Woods that have medium heat value, meaning that one quart equals 150 to 200 gallons. 567 to 757 liters of fuel oil or 200 to 250 cubic feet, 5.5 to 7 cubic meters of natural gas. Are white birch, Douglas fir, red maple, eastern larch, big leaf maple, and elm. Woods that have a low heat value, meaning that one quart equals 100 to 150 gallons, 378 to 567 liters. Of fuel oil or 150 to 200 cubic feet, 4 to 5.5 cubic meters, of natural gas, are aspen, red alder, white pine. Redwood, western hemlock, eastern hemlock, sitka spruce, cottonwood, western red cedar, and lodgepole pine. How much wood is in a cord? A cord of wood is a pile of logs 4 feet, 1.2 meters, wide. 4 feet, 1.2 meters, high, and 8 feet, 2.4 meters, long. It may contain from 77 to 96 cubic feet of wood. The larger the unsplit logs the larger the gaps, with fewer cubic feet of wood actually in. The cord. Burning one full cord of wood produces the same amount of energy as one ton of coal. How much wood is in a cord? A cord of wood is a pile of logs 4 feet, 1.2 meters, wide. 4 feet, 1.2 meters, high, and 8 feet, 2.4 meters, long. It may contain from 77 to 96 cubic feet of wood. The larger the unsplit logs the larger the gaps, with fewer cubic feet of wood actually in. The cord. Burning one full cord of wood produces the same amount of energy as one ton of coal.
Wynn was offshore drilling for oil first done. The first successful offshore oil well was built off the coast at Summerland. Santa Barbara County, California, in 1896. When were glass blocks invented? Dating back to 1847, glass blocks were originally used as telegraph insulators. They were much smaller and thicker than structural glass blocks and were used mostly in the southeastern. Untied states until eventually replaced with porcelain and other types of insulating materials. Glass building bricks were invented in Europe in the early 1900s as thin blocks of glass supported by a grid. Structural glass blocks have been manufactured in the United States since. Pittsburgh-based Pittsburgh Corning began producing them in 1938. Blocks made at that time measured approximately 8 inches. 20 centimeters, square by nearly 5 inches. 13 centimeters, in depth, and cast a greenish tint as light transmitted through it. Today's glass blocks can be a square foot in size, much more uniformly shaped. And available in many different sizes, textures, and colors. What are the advantages of solar power? Solar energy is a clean, abundant, and safe energy source. More energy falls from the sun on Earth in one hour than is used by everyone in the world in one year. Over a two-week period, Earth gets as much energy from the sun as is stored in all known reserves of coal, oil, and natural gas. Solar energy can be used to heat water and spaces for homes and businesses or can be converted into electricity. Solar energy accounts for only about 1% of the total renewable energy resources. Which woods have the best heating quality in a wood-burning stove? Wood accounts for 28% of the total of renewable energy resources in the United States. Woods that have high heat value, meaning that one quart equals 200 to 250 gallons. 757 to 946 liters of fuel oil or 250 to 300 cubic feet 7 to 8.5 cubic meters of natural gas are hickory beech oak yellow birch ash hornbeam sugar maple and apple woods that have medium heat value meaning that one quart equals 150 to 200 gallons 567 to 757 liters of fuel oil or 200 to 250 cubic feet 5.5 to 7 cubic meters of natural gas are white birch, Douglas fir, red maple, eastern larch, big leaf maple, and elm. Woods that have a low heat value meaning that one quart equals 100 to 150 gallons, 
378 to 567 liters of fuel oil or 150 to 200 cubic feet, 4 to 5.5 cubic meters, of natural gas, are aspen, red alder, white pine, redwood, western hemlock, eastern hemlock, Sitka spruce, cottonwood, western red cedar, and lodgepole pine. When did the use of lead-free fuel become mandatory in the United States? The sale of leaded gasoline for motor vehicles ended in 1996. All vehicles manufactured after July 1974 for sale in the United States were required to use unleaded gasoline. Which plant has been investigated as a source of petroleum? A number of plant species have been investigated as potential sources of petroleum. The shrub called the gopher plant, Euphorbia lathyrus, produces significant quantities of a milk-like sap called latex that is an emulsion of hydrocarbons in water. Another candidate is Potosporum resiniferum, a native of the Philippines. The fruit of this plant, called a petroleum nut, is quite large and the oil harvested from it is frequently used for illumination. Various experiments are in progress to use vegetable and seed oils as diesel substitutes, particularly in farm machinery. In Western Europe, there are over 200 power plants that burn rubbish to produce electricity. France, Denmark, and Switzerland recover 50, 60, and 80 percent of their municipal waste respectively. Biomass can be converted into biofuels such as biogas or methane, methanol, and ethanol. However, the process has been more costly than the conventional fossil fuel processes. Rubbish buried in the ground can provide methane gas through anaerobic decomposition. One ton of refuse can produce 8,000 cubic feet, 227 cubic meters, of methane. Which you? S state produces the most crude oil. Texas is the largest producer of crude oil in the United States. In 2008, Texas produced 398,000 barrels of oil. Alaska is the second largest producer of crude oil in the United States producing 249,874,000 barrels of oil in 2008. What is the lightest known solid? The lightest solid is silica aerogels, made of tiny spheres of bonded silicon and oxygen atoms linked together into long strands separated with air pockets. They appear almost like frozen wisps of smoke. They also have the lowest conductivity, lowest solid density, highest porosity, 
highest surface area. And the highest dielectric constant, giving them the potential of being used in many applications. Understandably, their use is not currently widespread due to the expense to create them. And the difficulty in insulating capabilities will allow their use in place of fiberglass and polyurethane foam. Significantly reducing global energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions. What is the process known as hydrocarbon cracking? Cracking is a process that uses heat to decompose complex substances. Hydrocarbon cracking is the decomposition by heat, with or without catalysts. Of petroleum or heavy petroleum fractions, groupings, to give materials of lower boiling points. Thermal cracking, developed by William Burton, 1865-1954, in 1913, uses heat and pressure to break some of the large heavy hydrocarbon molecules into smaller gasoline grade ones. The cracked hydrocarbons are then sent to a flash chamber where the various fractions are separated. Thermal cracking not only doubles the gasoline yield, but has improved gasoline quality. Producing gasoline components with good anti-knock characteristics, no premature fuel ignition. What percentage of salt consumed in the United States is used for de-icing roads? In 2009, an estimated 43% of the salt, sodium chloride, consumed in the United States was used to de-ice roads. Although calcium chloride may also be effective in de-icing roads, it is not as economical. Did the White House ever have solar panels? Yes, during President Jimmy Carter's 1924 administration. 32 solar panels were installed on the roof of the White House above the Oval Office on June 30, 1979. The panels were Subsequently removed in 1986 during President Ronald Reagan's 1911-2004 administration. Why is Pennsylvania crude oil so highly valued? The waxy, sweet paraffinic oils found in Pennsylvania first became prominent. Because high quality lubricating oils and greases could be made from them. Similar grade crude oil is also found in West Virginia, Eastern Ohio, and Southern New York. Different types of crude oil vary in thickness and color. Ranging from a thin, clear oil to a thick, tar-like substance. What is crown glass? In the early 1800s, window glass was called crown glass. 
it was made by blowing a bubble, then spinning it until flat. This left a sheet of glass with a bump, or crown, in the center. This blowing method of window pane making required great skill and was very costly. Still, the finished crown glass produced a distortion through which everything looked curiously wavy. And the glass itself was also faulty and uneven. By the end of the 19th century, flat glass was mass produced and was a common material. The cylinder method replaced the old method, and used compressed air to produce glass that could be slit lengthwise. Reheated, and allowed to flatten on an iron table under its own weight. New furnaces and better polishing machines made the production of plate glass a real industry. Today, almost all flat glass is produced by a float glass process. Which reheats the newly formed ribbon of glass and allows it to cool without touching a solid surface. This produces inexpensive glass that is flat and free from distortion. What is Buckminster Fullerene? It is a large molecule in the shape of a soccer ball, containing 60 carbon atoms. Whose structure is the shape of a truncated icosahedron, a hollow. Spherical object with 32 faces, 12 of them pentagons and the rest hexagons. This molecule was named Buckminster Fullerene because of the structure's resemblance. To the geodesic domes designed by American architect R. Buckminster Fuller, 1895 to 1983. The molecule was formed by vaporizing material from a graphite surface with a laser. Large molecules containing only carbon atoms have been known to exist around certain types of carbon rich stars. Similar molecules are also thought to be present in soot. Formed during the incomplete combustion of organic materials. Chemist Richard Smalley, 1943 to 2005, identified Buckminster Fullerene in 1985 and speculated that it may be fairly common throughout the universe. Since that time, other stable, large, even-numbered carbon clusters have been produced. This new class of molecules has been called full errands. Since they all seem to have the structure of a geodesic dome. They are also popularly known as buckyballs. Buckminster Fullerene, C60 seems to function as an insulator, conductor, semiconductor, and superconductor in various compounds. Although no practical application has yet to be developed for it or the other full errands. Research is expected to result in new types of materials, lubricants. Coatings, catalysts, electro-optical devices, and medical applications. What is biomass energy? The catch-all term biomass includes all the living organisms in an area. Wood, crops, and crop waste, and wastes of plant, mineral, and animal matter are part of the biomass. Much of it is in garbage, 
which can be burned for heat energy or allowed to decay and produce methane gas. However, some crops are grown specifically for energy, including sugar cane. Sorghum, ocean kelp, water hyacinth, and various species of trees. It has been estimated that 90% of U.S. waste products could be burned to provide as much energy as 100 million tons of coal, 20% will not burn, but can be recycled. The use of biomass energy is significantly higher in developing countries where electricity and motor vehicles are scarcer. What does the symbol H202 stand for? It is hydrogen peroxide, a syrupy liquid compound used as a strong bleaching, oxidizing, and disinfecting agent. It is usually made either in anthrohydroquinone autoxidation processes or electrolytically. The primary use of hydrogen peroxide is in bleaching wood pulp. A more familiar use is as a 3% solution as an antiseptic and germicide. Undiluted, it can cause burns to human skin and mucous membranes. Is a fire and explosion risk, and can be highly toxic. How is solar energy converted into electricity? Solar energy is converted into electricity using photovoltaic PV cells or concentrating solar power plants. Photovoltaic cells convert sunlight directly into electricity. Individual PV cells are combined in modules of about 40 cells to form a solar panel. 10 to 20 solar panels are used to power a typical home. The panels are usually mounted on the home facing south or mounted onto a Tracking device that follows the sun for the maximum exposure to sunlight. Power plants and other industrial locations combine more solar panels to generate electricity. Concentrating solar power plants collect the heat, energy, from the sun to heat a fluid. Which produces steam that drives a generator to produce electricity. The three main types of concentrating solar power systems are parabolic trough, solar dish, and solar power tower, which describe the different types of collectors. Parabolic troughs collectors have a long, rectangular, U-shaped reflector or mirror focused on the sun with a tube, receiver, along its length. A solar dish looks very much like a large satellite dish that concentrates the sunlight into a thermal receiver that absorbs and collects the heat and transfers it to the engine generator. The engine produces mechanical power, which is used to run a generator converting mechanical power into electrical power. A solar tower uses a field of flat, sun-tracking mirrors, called heliostats. To collect and concentrate the sunlight onto a tower-mounted heat exchanger, receiver. A fluid is heated in the receiver to generate steam, which is used in a generator to produce electricity.
What is the float glass process? Manufacture of high quality flat glass, needed for large areas and industrial uses. Depends on the float glass process, invented by Alastair Pilkington, 1920 to 1995, in 1952. The float process departs from all other glass processes where the molten glass flows from the melting chamber into the float chamber, which is a molten tin pool approximately 160 feet, 49 meters, long and 12 feet, 3.5 meters, wide. During its passage over this molten tin, the hot glass assumes the perfect flatness of the tin surface and develops excellent thickness uniformity. The finished product is as flat and smooth as plate glass without having been ground and polished. When were photovoltaic cells developed? A group of researchers at Bell Labs, Calvin Fuller, 1902-1994, Daryl Chapin, 1906-1995, and Gerald Pearson, 1905-1987, developed the first practical silicon solar cell in 1954. The earliest PV cells were used to power you. As space satellites. The use of PV cells was then expanded to power small items such as calculators and watches. What is a reformulated gasoline? Oil companies are being required to offer new gasolines that burn more cleanly and have less impact on the environment. Typically, reformulated gasoline, RFG, contains lower concentrations of benzene, aromatics, and olefins, less sulfur, a lower reed vapor pressure, RVP and some percentage of an oxygenate. Non-aromatic component, such as methyl tertiary butyl ether, MTBE. MTBE is a high-octane gasoline blending component produced by the reaction of isobutylene and methanol. It was developed to meet the ozone ambient air quality standards but its unique characteristics as a water pollutant pose a challenge to the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. In meeting the requirements of the Clean Air Act, the Safe Drinking Water Act, and the Underground Storage Tank Program, the Clean Air Act called for reformulated gasoline to be sold in the cities with the worst smog pollution beginning January 1st. 1995 reformulated gasoline is now used in 17 cities and the District of Columbia.